When I figured out how to use this automated mockup script, I was easily able to do 10 times the output with the same amount of work each day. Creating great mockups is one of the worst parts of print on demand. It takes forever, especially with platforms like Placeit or Canva, and most of the time those mockups aren't even the right mockups to get your products to sell. This mockup script that I'm giving you in this video will allow you to automatically generate mockups that you choose without even having to touch the computer while it's running. This is one of the few key systems that actually allowed me to grow my business. In hindsight, if I had never found this script, I don't think it would have been possible for me to reach the level of success that I have. As silly as it sounds, this specific script allowed me to go from making nothing to multiple six figures a year and grow what's approaching a multiple seven figure business. Instead of tediously spending my time making mockups, which takes a long time, you just add all of your designs to a folder and run the script. In this video, we'll cover everything from preparing the mockups to use with the script, preparing your designs, and running the script. I'll mostly be going over a t-shirt example in this video, but this will work for any product that you can create a mockup for, and I'll show you a couple different examples throughout the video. Feel free to watch different parts of the video back at half speed if you need to, and without further ado, let's get into step number one, which is preparing the mockups. Now, the good thing about creating these mockups is you'll do it once and then you'll never have to do it again. The downside to using my method is that you do have to pay for Adobe Photoshop. Now, sometimes you can get it for around $10 a month. I'll leave a coupon down below for a 40% off coupon. But either way, even if you ended up having to pay the full $20 a month, I still think that by the end of this video, you'll see the value and why this is so important. After you've downloaded Photoshop, you'll also need another program called Figma. I use Figma to make all of my designs and I used it as an example in my t-shirt design tutorial. If you haven't seen that video, then parts of this one might be a little bit confusing. So I'd encourage you to go back and watch that one all the way through. These are the two mockups that we'll be preparing as an example in this video. If you wanna find similar or exact mockups that I'm using in this video, just go to Etsy, type in 3001, and then the color of shirt that you're looking for, and just hit enter. This will bring up a ton of different options, and you should be able to find some of the mockups, like this one right here for $5 that I'm using in this video. After you've purchased and downloaded them, you should get something that looks like this in a PNG or JPEG file. The very first thing you'll wanna do is just right click on one of your mockups, hit select open with, and choose Adobe Photoshop. Now, before we do anything else in Photoshop, we have to quickly switch to that other program that I mentioned called Figma. Now, if you've seen my design tutorial, then hopefully this will look familiar. On the left side, I've got the creating mat, and on the right side, I've got all the designs that we made in that video. Now, if you don't have this creating mat or you had trouble adding it, it'll be in the download for this video, which you'll need to download anyway. Just go into the scripts and miscellaneous and you should see the creating mat, which you should be able to just drag and drop right into Figma. The full grid is the maximum print size and this red grid on the inside is a more ideal sizing guide. I talk about that in my design tutorial, but we need to make the mockups so that we could utilize the entire space. So to do that, I'm just going to hit the R key on my keyboard or come up to the top left and just select the rectangle tool and I need to click on the top left-hand corner of the grid and just click and drag down to the bottom right, and it should kind of snap into place. From here, I'm going to change the fill to black color. When I select the design, I should be able to move it around. Now I'm just going to hold Shift, Command, and hit C, and it should copy it as a PNG to my clipboard. Now I could go back into Photoshop and just hit Command V to paste it in. This is super important, otherwise nothing's going to work. On the right hand side of the screen, you should see the layers panel. If you right click on that layer that you just pasted in, you have to click convert to smart object. With that done, we can reposition it and put it into place. To do that, I'm just gonna hit Command T to bring up these little handles, and now I can click and drag and make this rectangle a bit smaller. Now, since this is the maximum print size, it needs to come almost to the edge of the seams, maybe about a half inch, quarter inch to the seam, and just a little bit lower than the collar. This looks pretty good right here, but you'll just have to play around with this a little bit on your own. The main idea here is you want your black rectangle to fill up most of the space that would be the maximum print area. So this print space is 15 inches by 17 inches, and you can see how close it gets to the sleeves and the collar. And you're just trying to recreate that in your mock-up. Now in reality, it's much closer to the top of the shirt. So I like moving my black frame just a little bit closer, 
but try and get these edges to kind of match up with what Printify shows. Then once you feel like it's in the right place, you'll come up and hit this check mark. Now, the whole reason we add that black frame in is it's going to act as a placeholder. So when we run the script, the script knows exactly where to place our design on the shirt. And really, once this placeholder is in the right position, we're done with the first mockup. So what we can do is just hit shift command S, we'll be able to save this to a file. Now from the download in the description, you should see a mockups folder, and this is the file where you want to save the mockup. So double click there and then just rename it to something easy to remember and hit save and then just hit okay. Now that mockup that we just made will display our designs exactly as we export them in the exact same colors. So if you export a black, white, or colored design, it will display it exactly like that. But let's say that you have a white shirt mockup and you always want the text for that mockup to appear as black. Here's how you do it. So on the right hand side of the screen, you should see our two layers. This top one is our rectangle placeholder. So select that layer and hit Command J and it should make a copy of it. Now immediately, just set the opacity down to zero and turn the eyeball off so that that layer is invisible. Then select the original placeholder layer, come down to this little circle icon, click it and click solid color. Now this is where you're going to pick the color that you're forcing the designs to come out as. So if this was a white mockup, we'd probably want to set the color to black. But in this instance, since I really wanna drive this point home, we're gonna choose and make every design that goes through this mockup lime green. Then we're gonna hit okay. And now you're only gonna see lime green. So we have to fix that. Move your mouse in between the color fill layer and your rectangle placeholder layer and holding the option or alt key, you should see your mouse change to this little square with a little down arrow just click. It will force that color to only be applied to our placeholder layer. So now if I just shift command S again, I can save this as a new option and call it something like lime green and hit save. Then I'll just hit okay. And now if I open up my mockups folder, you can see I have two mockups. One will display the colors exactly as they originally are and one will display them in lime green since that was the color that we chose. Now I'm gonna do another real-time example so you can see how fast this can really be done. So again, starting completely from scratch, we're gonna use this mockup. I'm gonna open it in Photoshop. Then I'm gonna come back into Figma and I'm gonna hit R. I'm gonna make our placeholder rectangle I'm gonna set the color to black. I'm gonna shift command C to copy it as a PNG. And then I'm gonna paste it in here. Right click and hit convert to smart object. Then I can hit control or command T and I can just scale this rectangle down. Now for here, this one's just going to be a little bit more wonky, but I'm just going to try and size it as best as possible. So I'm just going to size it. Now I have to rotate this one a little bit. We didn't have to do that for the last example, but I'm gonna rotate this one a little bit and just try and get it into the best position possible. And it doesn't even matter that it's coming over the jeans because some of our designs aren't gonna be that long. So this is looking pretty good. Maybe less rotation. That, I think that looks pretty good. And we can always come back and edit this if we need to. Then I'll just hit save and I will save this. I will save this as dark gray Heather to save and hit okay. Just like that, we've successfully made three different mockups. So hopefully this is all making sense. But with that out of the way, now we can get into the second step, which is formatting our designs. Now back in Figma, hopefully you'll remember from the design tutorial making these designs. Now just over here, I've combined our mockup with a white placeholder and I've overlaid the creating mat so we can kind of understand what's going on. And for this first example, I'm just going to grab one of these designs. Let's do this one at first, and I'm just going to paste it in. So ideally our design would show up somewhere like here. Not too big, not too small, and not too close to the collar. But there's something that you have to understand about the mockup script. The way that it works is it's going to take your design and put it to the very top of the placeholder and it's also going to make it as big as it possibly can. Now, if we made a mock-up that looked like that, it would look absolutely ridiculous. Nobody wants a design all the way up at the very top of their neck that stretches from armpit to armpit. It just makes no sense. That's why in our design tutorial, we spent so much time making it the right size and getting it positioned correctly. So we just have to tell the script that we want it a little bit smaller and a little bit lower on the shirt. To do that is really easy. We're just going to click and select the design and move it up to the top left corner of the creating map. You should see it kind of clicks into place with those orange lines. From there, 
we just need to hit Command G. This will create a new group. Then on the right side of the screen, you should see new controls called Auto Layout. When you click on this, it'll add some new controls right below. We'll have horizontal padding and vertical padding. This will allow us, if we click and drag on the horizontal padding, to add some invisible space on either side of our design. Then we can do the same thing for the vertical padding and get our design right back to where we started. This way, when we run it through the script, it knows to add invisible space on the top and sides of our design. Let me show you again why this would be so important. Let's say we had a taller design, something like this. If the, we allowed the script to just stretch it to the maximum size and put it up at the top, it would look absolutely ridiculous. It would come all the way up to your neck and it would stretch all the way down to your stomach. This would look ridiculous on a t-shirt. That's again why we spent so much time getting it to be the correct size. So from here, we would just hit Command G to group it. Then we would move it to the top left corner of the mat. Then we will click Auto Layout and we will add some padding horizontally and we can add some padding vertically, just like that. Now for some designs like this one, it might already be in a group. Now what happens if we just already click Auto Layout? Well, it completely messes up our design. So regardless of whether you have a group already, just start by hitting Command G and make a new group, hit Auto Layout, add your horizontal padding to make it the right width, and add some vertical padding to set it down low enough on your shirt. And just like that, we're done with that one as well. Do one more example so that you can see, and we'll do this colored design. We're gonna set it to the top right, Command G, Auto Layout, add horizontal padding to fill up the full 15 inch frame, and then just move it down a little bit from there. That looks great. Now it's also really important that you name the frame. So I'll just click on the layer and copy it and paste it in so that each layer is just named the same name as what the design is. And after you're done naming them, you should be left with several layers that look just like this with invisible padding on all the sides. Naming the designs is tedious, but it will really pay off long-term, especially when I'm able to release my automatic product uploader. The product uploader will include the name of the design as part of the title, so you don't have to type it in every time you upload a product. Basically, you'll just export your designs to a file, It'll create mockups and upload them for you. And then all you have to do, the only manual work is just applying the mockup to the product listing on Etsy. So it takes out all of the time consuming work between making the design and having a finished product. So now let's export the design so we can use them with the script. Assuming that you've finished adding padding to all of your designs, you'll just click and drag and select them all. From here, you'll need to change the color for all of the black designs to white. So on the selection colors, just click the black box and turn it to white. Then you should see an export button at the very bottom. So just click on that and click export however many layers you have. Now it's super important that you save your exported designs to this OBJ0 file that I've included as part of the download file in the description. So open that up and just hit save. So hopefully you're following along and now we can finally run the mockup script. Now disclaimer, I did not write the code for this mockup script. It was originally created by an Adobe forum user named JJ Mac. I found it on his website many years ago and I've just been using it ever since. Now his website has since disappeared, so I have no idea where he is or how to give him credit for this, but he made it free to use, so I figured I'd pass it along to you. In the description, you'll be able to download this file, which has all of the files that you need, as well as the creating mat and the mockup scripts. So after you have that downloaded, we have to install the scripts. To do that, I'm gonna have to navigate to my applications folder, and I'll do that in a new window. And we just have to find the Adobe Photoshop folder. This might look a little bit different if you're on Windows. Just double click and open it, go to the presets folder, choose scripts. So what I like to do is just select them, right click, hit copy, and then you can just paste them in. You also might have to enter in your password because I believe this is a protected folder. Now you'll just have to relaunch or open Photoshop. Now with Photoshop open, if you click on file from the very top, I believe it's off screen right now, you should see a scripts option and now you should see mockups appear. So just click on mockups. And we just have to change a couple settings the first time and then it'll save these every other time. So this first setting is choosing where the mockups are stored. So we'll just hit browse and we'll need to navigate to that mockups folder where we created those three mockups. Then we'll just hit open. And the second is the objects collection folder. 
So we'll hit browse. And this is for the OBJ0 folder that holds all of our designs. Now you do not want to select the OBJ0 folder, you want to select the parent folder. So what I mean is instead of double clicking and opening, you'll just make sure that you're on the file where this one is visible and then click open. Now finally for the output folder, you'll just hit browse. And I've also included an export folder so you can double click and open this one up. And that way all of your finished results will be in the export folder. Now, every time you run the script, those settings will be saved. However, every single time that you run the script, you have to check this box, edit smart objects, and fit the image. As long as you can remember to check those two boxes, you'll be good to go. Then we'll just hit create mock-up collages and watch the magic happen. Now, it's not going to look like much is happening. It's, it might be really laggy at first, but if I just open up the file where we chose it to export all of our graphics, you can see that each mockup is being generated in real time, and I'm not even doing anything. So you can see how it's generating all of these mockups. I could do as many mockups as I wanted to with as many different designs as I wanted to, and I could just let this run and run and run. Okay, so it finished four mockups for three templates in less than a minute. So just hit okay. And let's just take a look at the exported results. So as we scroll through, you can see each design that we've made is applied to each template. Here's the one where we forced it to be green. Again, all of the designs look great. They're scaled, they're properly positioned. And all we had to do is just make one good template and it's able to automatically create all of our designs. You can see we have the colored and they all just look perfect. And all of that happened in less than a minute and trying to make this many mockups by hand would take forever. Now, what if you're selling a different product like a mug? I like this website called FreePick, and they have a ton of free and paid mockups that you can use. Now, I'm looking specifically in this case for a mug mockup, so we'll just make a search for that. And also, you wanna make sure that you have a PSD filter applied, so you're only looking at Photoshop mockups. After scrolling through a little bit, I kinda like this one, so I'm gonna download it and open it in Photoshop. The very first thing you'll wanna do is look and see where the smart object is. So if you'll remember, we created a placeholder on the shirt mockup, and in here, it's just going to look a little bit different. So I'm gonna open this smart objects folder, and you should see a layer like this one, your design here. If that's the case, we're just going to hit Command J and duplicate it, and we're going to click and drag it all the way up to the very top of the layers. So what we need to do is again, change the opacity to zero and click the eyeball to make sure it's turned off. And we can just hit save, so Command S. So now this mockup is ready to use in our script. We could use this as a mug mockup, but we would still need to position our designs so that they appear correctly in this placeholder. Now to do that, on the layer that we just copied at the very top, double click on this little window on the left of the layer, and it should open up a blank layer like this. Just hit Command A to select everything and Command C to copy it. Then back in Figma, what we can do is just hit Command V to paste it in, and now this is going to be our new placeholder. So we could add some color so that we can see it a little bit better. And let's say that we wanted to add this design. So we could paste it over here and just bring it to the top. And then maybe I'll want to scale it so it's right in the middle. Well, how would we do that again? We would set it to the top left of this placeholder, and you guessed it, we will group it, add the auto layout, add some padding, and add some vertical padding as well. And now, as you can see, if we exported this design and we ran it through the mockup script with the mug, it would look exactly as we expect it to. I really hope that starts to make sense, where if you're applying the padding to get it in the right position on the placeholder, when you run the script, it'll appear in the exact right position every single time. Now here's a few tips and a few problems that you might encounter. Problem number one is the top layer is not the smart object. If the top layer is not the smart object, the script is going to fail. It either has to be the original smart object, like that black rectangle that we applied, or it has to be an invisible copy 
of a smart object at the very top of the layers. The second problem that you might face is you didn't space or size properly. So for some mockups like picture frames or stickers, you don't even need to add space to the design, you just have to size it properly. Grouping your design and adding auto layout in Figma and then adding invisible padding on either side only helps you make your designs smaller or fit them at a certain level of your total print area. For something like a sticker, you don't need invisible space around it. In fact, it'll just mess it up and even a frame is going to be very similar. For most frames, you just want each image to be the exact same size so that when you run the script, it applies the same size picture to the frame mockup every single time. Problem number three is basically the same as number two, where you can only do one type of product at a time. So it's not gonna make sense for you to do t-shirts and mugs, even if the design's the same, because the formatting for the design when you export it is gonna be different. Tip number one is to always use an external hard drive. So I use an external hard drive like this. I don't know if you can see it, it's plugged in right now. But basically that will allow you to export all of your mockups to the hard drive without taking up a ton of space on your computer. Let's say you did 40 different designs on 10 different mockups. That's gonna create 400 really high quality images in a matter of minutes. And if you're doing that on your regular hard drive, it's going to significantly slow down your computer. So I'd highly recommend investing in some kind of hard drive that you can just export all of your files to as the script is running. Tip number two is do not steal mockups. Now there are ways to get around actually paying the $5 to get a mockup, but it's not worth it at all. Now, a couple months ago when I accidentally leaked my shop from the challenge series that I'm doing, new updates coming soon, a bunch of people who saw that video went and just copied not only my mockups, but my designs directly and just started uploading them to Etsy. And Etsy was not happy to say the least. Etsy can find out and so can the shop owner who sells the mockups if you've stolen it or if you've purchased it. So do not steal, it's gonna cause you problems. You'll get your shop shut down and it's just not worth it. So spend the $5 and buy the mockup and then work on growing a business that can make you hundreds to thousands to millions of dollars. Just don't steal someone's mockup or designs. And tip number three is just to watch back any parts of this video that were challenging in half speed. So you can click the little gear icon, change this playback speed to 0.5 and you should be good to go. Now, a couple more side notes is I am working on creating a Discord community. So if you feel like being a part of that, I'm gonna leave a link to the new Discord in the comments section or the description below this video. And we're just gonna see where that goes. Hopefully I can grow something. Hopefully I can be more active there than I am on Instagram because I know I haven't been good at getting back to you guys on Instagram, just for people to come and hang out and talk. Now, I don't know what's gonna happen, if there's gonna be a ton of scammers. I'm not gonna ask you for any personal information. I'm not gonna ask you anything about crypto. There's a ton of scammers in my comment section, so just be careful. The Discord community is going to be legit, so you'll find that in the description if you care to join. So yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed, left a like and a comment. And as always, I'll see you soon. And challenge update videos are coming soon.